everybody, welcome to Wine Library TV. I'm your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and we're gonna get into wine today because uh, we're gonna change it up. We're gonna taste wine on today's program. Um, Gruner Feltliner, why is it important and why does it have its own episode? And I'm gonna tell you right now why. I'm not gonna, not gonna wait, I'm not gonna make you wait for this because these kind of wines are the future of the wine industry. What Gruner does, and using a wine term that is very nerdy, this is in inner sanctions, like the nerd cave. We go in there and this is how we call Gruner, we call it groovy, because we're just cool like that. Or not really. Anyway, we're gonna refer to it as groovy because I want you to know all the terminology of the wine geek nation. Um, WGN meets once a week and you know, I'm part of it, so uh, we call it groovy. So, these groovy wines from Austria are the future of wine because of this, food, friendly. The future of wines, in my opinion, over the next five to 15 years, it's a long range, five to 15 years are going to be wines that become more and more food friendly. You know, Pinot Noir exploded. Unfortunately, most of the California people are starting to make it unfood friendly, but you know, Pinot Noir exploded after the movie and it's a food friendly wine, so a lot of people are starting to get into those. Uh, the whites, the crisp whites are so great. Oysters and, and the way our our eating habits are changing. We're eating lighter, we're trying to eat a little more healthy, and I believe wines like Gruner are going to be the future for that reason because they pair so tremendously with food. And so, uh, and by, by themselves actually, and we'll get into that in a second. So what are we gonna talk about today? Number one, next week, a week and a day from today, we are celebrating Wine Library TV's first anniversary. And here's the bomb of the whole thing, Eric and I, are going to London for the Future of Web Applications Conference. So we will not be here the whole week. What do we do? We need your help. I'm really struggling. I couldn't figure out, should we tape a bunch of episodes? It's gonna feel so impersonal because I'm not gonna be here. I know I screwed it up and I apologize, but I, I had to go to this and so uh, I need your help. So what can you, what, what should I do? And that's not the question of the day, but I could really use that as well. So please, anybody got any ideas, let me know for the one year anniversary. Um, I'm struggling. What else? Saturday, I'm gonna be here at the Bordeaux tasting table between 1 and 5 p.m. If you're in the neighborhood, even if you're not, make the effort. I'm gonna be at my best behavior. We're gonna have a lot of fun tasting some wines, anything you'd like to talk about. Rarely do I get in on Saturdays in the first quarter of the year, so I'm excited I'm gonna be here. Please, please um, just do that. Please stop by and say hello. Let's get into the wines, then we'll get into other things later. So Gruner really got hot about five to seven years ago. It really exploded on the New York restaurant scene. Paul Greco, which is a great uh, sommelier, uh, who was at Gramercy Tavern at the time, really kind of pushed it hard. A couple other people, Alexander comes to mind, and it really got caught on the scene, and it's been really exciting to see what's happened with Gruner over the last couple of years. And so we're gonna try and start today with, we're gonna try, and I think we're going to, the Solonet Gruner Veltliner, and we call it Groovy, and this is 11 US dollars, and uh, no rating that I'm aware of. And um, I'm excited to try it. This was a screw top. We're starting to see a lot of the groovy producers go to screw top. Screw top is making an impact. Now let's talk about vintages for a second. And yes, I have the big glass out here because it gives a lot of aromatics and I love the aromatics of this wine. So not always do you have to use the proper wine glass. This is the fun, fun, fun lesson of the day. Sometimes if you get real smart or stupid, I'm not sure which one of those I am, you can use a glass that really accentuates the things you're looking for. And this really gives a lot of bouquet and, and I love the bouquet of the Gruners. And before, uh, and this is my opportunity, it was a little frizzante, I wanted to show everybody this. 2004, 2003 are both tremendous vintages in Austria, especially for the Gruners. Um, 2005 is a little tricky. The yields are way down because a lot of spoiled wines, they're very good, but they could have, you know, they're gonna be low production, so they're gonna be hard to find. 05s are gonna be solid, real good, but 04 overall, you're gonna have a lot more hits than misses, and 05 you can have some misses if you don't use the right producer. This is a 05, but a, a very solid producer, we're really happy with them. Again, if you're lucky enough, this is one huge misconception that I have to shoot out there. People think they have to drink Gruner's Young. They treat them like Pinot Grigios or Sauvignon Blancs. Wrong! You don't have to. Some of them, like the lower entry level Gruners like this, maybe it's a good idea to drink within a year or two. They're really fresh and exciting. However, some of the classics, including Rudy Pickler, who we'll get to in a little bit, can last for 10 to 15 years easy. And that's shocking for white wines. They're really involved, so it's fun. Anyway, really nice color, you know, golden, nothing too crazy. 
really fresh grapefruit, green dill. Is there any dill that's not green there? Probably not. Really fresh grapefruit and dill coming through, very aromatic on the nose. Really nice, uh, a little hint of a lemon peel, really like it. It's very fragrant, very exciting on the nose. Well balanced, um, I'm getting really, really acidic, um, sour, almost like a real sour grape. You know, like the, you know, just the grapes that you like to eat around the house, the green grapes. Sometimes you get one of those real sour ones. That's coming through quite a bit. Almost like a sour patch candy would come to mind if you've ever eaten any of those. Um, but um, really, really dull actually. I'm a little bit disappointed with this wine. I've had Gruner's in this price point that I've found to be a lot better. That's one of the nice things about Gruner. You can get some nice ones between 10 and $14. This is not doing as much for me as I'd hoped. I've never had it before, but I've been hearing some really nice things. So I'm a little bit a little bit disappointed. A little one-dimensional. I'm getting a little green pickle, which I like. More cucumber, like not salted all the way. You know, like somebody who made their own pickles out of cucumbers, but didn't go all the way, like half pregnant um, in their attempt. Getting that a little bit. Um, that's about it. I mean, just not, not too classic. I'm going to go 84 points on this wine. I don't really see this wine bringing much to the table in any shape or form. Let's move on. Reiner Wies, Gruner Veltliner, Groovy, 2003 from the Wachau, which is a great, great, great um, area in Austria. Uh, 15 US dollars, not rated that I'm aware of. Give a little rinse. And we'll take a look at this. Let's see what's going on here. Again, normal light color. Oh, I'm spilling, fun. This almost has a uh, very, very subtle flavor of peach on the nose. Um, also a little hint of a, a little hint of Tabasco sauce and like spicy jalapeno pepper. So I'm getting a very, very intriguing um, spiciness on the nose. Other than that, pretty light. Almost uh, reminds me of a white cloud tea that I've had at Per Se restaurant. So, you know, kind of like kind of like gourmet tea oriented on the nose, if that makes any sense to any of you. Twelve five alcohol. So it's a nice little spritzer wine. This is nice, a little a little bit better than the Solonet. Um getting a little bit of um cabbage, cauliflower on the flavor profile, which is really wild. I'm a huge fan of cauliflower. Brussels sprouts coming through a little bit. So it's a very vegetable driven wine. Um, light and spritzy, also getting a, a little bit of a, a lemon peel again on this wine as well. But not killing me either and I'm really, I gotta be honest with you, I'm a little bit disappointed because really the excitement of Gruner is these wines under this price point. Really cool alternatives to the same old Pinot Grigio, the same old Sauvignon Blanc. I, I apologize but both of these did not bring as much as I had hoped, considering the sales of both these wines have been so good, I figured that was an indication. Again, I should have known better. People buy anything kind of sort of thing. Um, I'm going to give this wine 86 points. You know, it's better. It's got nice mouthfeel, and I like that alone. And for that alone, if it was a $10 wine, I'd be much more excited about it. But at $15, say it with me, we're going to give it a pass. Let's move on. And this is going to definitely get better, I think, because this is the man. Rudy Pickler. Terrasen, Gruner, Feltliner, 05, 90 points, Peter Moser, who is now writing for Stephen Tanzer on Austrian wines in, uh, in the international wine cellar that Stephen Tanzer has, 32 US dollars, as we like to call them, bones. It's 32 bones, people, and it's time to wake up. I mean, those two first wines, they put me to sleep a little bit. I'm really disappointed about that. Rudy Pickler. The first Austrian wine producer's wine I ever had. Good friend of mine, Walter Oberlander, really hot on Austrian wines five or six years ago. He would always come in, Gary, please, please, bring in more Austrian wines. I said, well, we build a new store, and we finally have a great selection, and Rudy Pickler's always a part of it. I don't know if you can catch the tail end of this, but a lot of Gruners are going to bring um, 
a good amount of frizzante. They're just really fresh. And, and Gruner or green Feltliner, you know, are, are very green wines. I mean, all of these wines with the green bottles and the, the grapey flavors and leaf and, and asparagus and jalapeno pepper and Brussels sprouts, only cabbage was white, I mean, uh, or cauliflower, excuse me. These are very green wines. And that's why I like them. So let's get into this. I think you can see the clear indication, no comparison, a much more golden dark color. These are very interesting wines from Rudy Pickler and I'm excited to, uh, I'm very excited to um, taste it. Great nose, I mean awesome. I'm getting a little bit of watermelon on the nose here. Yeah, like, like real, like I'll give you an example. Do you know watermelon after you eat it and then it's just like down to like the white and the little pink and the, and the rind, what is it there? The rind. Yeah, okay. You know, if you've ever had like 13 in front of them, if you've been in a contest or if you're just a slob like I am, they give off, they kind of go away from that watermelon smell and kind of go into that, you know, greenish kind of aspect that watermelon brings. That's what this smells like and it's really intriguing. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, I'm getting um, little hints of honey. Subtle honey flavors, almost like cheap honey. You know, like the garbage honey, like the you know the store brand honey, the stuff uh, my mom used to make me take when I was sick. Man, this wine's interesting. This is a great nose. This is a lot of fun. Almost like yellow starburst candy coming through as well. This is really intriguing. And my mood is, I'm already happy. This is awesome. Time to get groovy. Should we put some music behind that? Yeah, put some music behind that, Chris. Anyway, wow. This wine is a sweet and sour fan's dream. It is coming across so interesting. There's so many fruit flavors coming through. Um, again, grapes, and I know that's such a stinky term, but a gr like a store grape taste, um, um, grapefruit. Watermelon again, just the rinds, you know, just a really aromatic flavor coming through. You know, as I like to say, I smell sometimes taste. Sometimes you taste smells. It tastes aromatic. It tastes, you know, lively and fresh. And it's got a great undermined, under the road, but right there, um, level of like a layer of, uh, of spinach type flavors. It's really intriguing. But then you're getting a real hint of like sour, sour apple, like a real sour apple um, flavor coming through on the finish. This is great wine. I mean, this is velvety, well put together. I'm getting a hint of a, of, God, it, it gets so soury at the end, it's so wild how it transforms, it's like, I don't know, it's just like, you know, you're holding hands on the beach and you're so happy and then a shark eats you. I mean, that's what it does. It's just like, it's segueing so nicely and then, wow, where did that come from? Um, this is a good, good bottle of wine. I'm gonna score this wine 93 points. I think that Peter Moser totally missed the boat. Um, let's go 92 plus. I got a little excited there with the shark. Let's go 92 plus, a very strong effort from Rudy Pickler. If you, if you can afford a $32 bottle of white wine, um, you know, this is the ultimate with grouper, mahi-mahi, you know, all kinds of fish, flounder. I mean, there's a lot of, lot of fish that come to mind. Crudo, raw fish, oysters. This is a wine that goes really well. But even think about pigeon. You know, I can see pigeon with like cherry sauce. This is the kind of white wine with the acidity and the shark bite at the end that can really get in there. And uh, I'm feeling this wine. Nice wine. Let's move on. This is a big time producer as well. This is the Jertz Hertz Sonhoff 2003 Gruner Feltliner or Groovy 91 points Wine Spectator 36 US dollars and only 150 cases imported into the US. So uh, we're happy to have it, excited to have it, and let's give it a whirl. 36 bones, you know, so pricey. A lot of these gruners can get pricey when you get into the more uh, upscale producers. Again, there's a lot of value in gruner from 10 to 15. You know, it didn't work out today, but you know, maybe another time. Right off the bat, Eric, smell this. This is wild. 
Nothing. Eric gets nothing. This is a totally different smell. This is back to those peaches and the auto body shop aspect. I mean, there's a lot more gasoline, pollution, um, smoky stacks from power plants. I mean, it's like, it's muggy. It's like 7.30 p.m. on a rainy day in Camden, New Jersey. You know, it's, it's that kind of smell, musky, you know, smog, smog. LA fans, you're gonna be all over this wine. You're gonna recognize it right off the bat. This is a smoggy nose with a hint of grapefruit. Let's keep getting into it. Pretty interesting. Very intriguing nose, very different. This wine is probably 10 years too young to be drank right now. The amount of acidity and like a, a dart of sourness went right through my mouth when I finished this wine. And, and you know what? It went in my mouth and then it opened like a weapon, you know, and just went Pleh! and just really, really sour patched my entire palate. Almost with like a, wow, not good, like a salty, sour bomb. And I know everybody's gonna run out and buy this wine now, but this is a salty sour bomb in your mouth. And uh, and the funniest part was, that's the way it finished because I was as I was tasting it, I was like, wow, passion fruit, which is really intriguing. Um, um, like a Chinese plum, if you've ever had one of those. It was really, really quite tropical uh, in the mouth. And even even a hint of kiwi coming through, I really liked it. And then it got real wicked on me at the end. And that was for all you Boston fans. Yeah, people are gonna struggle with the finish of this wine, and it's pretty. You know, it's funny. Ninety-one spectator. I'm gonna score this wine eighty-nine points. But that being said, um, that's just because I can't predict the future. You know, it's just not what I do. I could see this wine changing completely in seven, 10 years. Normally I would score it higher if I felt the potential was really there. So all you people are gonna email me, well, that, you know, why didn't you say that, Gary? I would, I would score it higher if I thought the wine, I think this is a crapshoot. I think this is, you know, yellow brick road, do you turn left or right, you know? You know, if Dorothy turns the other way, who knows if we would have met all those great characters. And I feel like we're not gonna meet all these great characters. Instead of the Tin Man, the Lion, and the Scarecrow, I feel like we're gonna meet the Dragon, the Vampire, and Frankenstein. So, you know, that's not my thing, and I'm gonna pass on it, but it's a tremendous producer, and, uh, and I'm really shocked by the finish. I've had a bottle of this before, and I don't remember it being like that, but um, what are you gonna do, Eric? Okay, adopt a lurker. Eric had a tremendous idea. I was gonna call out some lurkers again today. Eric said, why don't you have the lurkers be adopted by some of the, uh, you know, mainstay, maniacs, the people that come in all the time. So, main people, please, uh, if you're interested in adopting a lurker, please mention that in comments today. That'd be real nice. And then lurkers, uh, please line up and uh, pick your favorite longtime maniac and we'll match you up. It'll be heaven. We'll share a nice bottle of Pinot Gris over a nice pizza. And, uh, you know, it'll be a lot of fun. It's really nice to adopt. A lurker. So please do that. Other than that, Saturday, London, what the heck do I do? Man, I'm really upset. One last thing, Gruner did not mention this. God, this is great, great stuff. Gruner, um, Janice Robinson and Tim Atkin and, uh, and a bunch of other, mas not they are masters of wine, but a bunch of other very serious wine personalities got together in the UK uh, not too long ago, and did a blind tasting with Austrian wines and some of the great Burgundies in the world. And Gruner's took seven of the top ten spots, including hundred-dollar white Burgundies. So, if you think these wines aren't that serious, and you think that they're just entry-level fun, fun wines to have with you know your olives as you're waiting for your real wine, think again. These are very serious wines. I'm very excited for the future of the groovy, and the groovy movement is very serious. So get on board. Question of the day. Who is your favorite tennis player of all time? Because you, and I'm, God, at this point, I'm not even sure how much. I get, I'll still give me this, and a little bit of me. We're changing the wine world, aren't we?